Jose Andres calls himself a pilgrim from Spain, a chef who arrived here 20 years ago with just 50 bucks in his pocket and a set of cooking knives. But these days, it's hard to call him anything less than an amazing American success story. He was GQ magazine's Chef of the Year, runs restaurants on both coasts, and has been nominated for Outstanding Chef in America by the James Beard Foundation. Jose Andres' personality is enormous, as are his plans to charm America into changing its eating habits. But it's his avant-garde approach to cooking that's really made him famous and has his diners rethinking how much fun food can be. Eating has to be fun. It has to be a social event, but where you have fun, that you are relaxed. Mm. But at the same time that you are relaxed, doesn't mean that you cannot be putting a lot of thought behind what, what eating, what the food uh, means to you. <laughs> Mini bar is a window into creativity. That's all. Welcome to Jose Andres' mini bar, a kind of culinary laboratory in Washington, D.C., where I was lucky enough to skip a month-long waiting list for one of just six seats. Uh, very delicate. Do I drink this or eat? Drink it. First course, first surprise, a temperature-layered cocktail. This is what we call the drink by the chef. Oh, I didn't even uh, realize this was alcohol. A cocktail <laughs> can be made by the bartender, but the cocktail also can be made by the chef. It's great. It's hot, but it's cold. There's cold underneath it. Already your taste buds are already uh, being excited because they are asking themselves what's happening here. What's happening here is molecular gastronomy, a cooking technique that embraces science and technology. Jose Andres says his 30-course menu is as much about the brain and the eye as the tongue and stomach. Listen to his explanation of the air floating on top of that caviar brioche. It's like if you're walking in Fifth Avenue and you could open your mouth <laughs> and right there, in the middle of Fifth Avenue, you will have that flavor in your mouth. Yeah. That's what air is all about. So what's that cone all about? Bagel and lox. Inside has cream cheese and instead of a smoked salmon has salmon raw. So Bagel and lox. Uh... Dishes are a bite or two with some complicated combinations. For example, I wondered why there was cotton candy wrapped around my seafood. But Cotton candy is the most amazing form of caramelization ever invented by men. Mm. And you're going to love it. It's going to be sweet and the smokiness of the wow. eel. Chef Andres's dishes are cutting edge. And opening this door into an unknown world. So what he thinks about ingredients may surprise you. I believe the future is vegetables and fruits. They are so much more sexier than a piece of chicken. You find vegetables and fruits sexy? Unbelievably sexy. Come on, <laughs> think about it for a second, okay? Let's compare a chicken breast, the best chicken breast from the best farm, with a beautiful pineapple. Cut the pineapple, already the aromas are inundating the entire kitchen. Has acidity, <laughs> uh, sour afternotes, uh, touches of passion fruit. All right, you're making me excited. Come on, and the chicken <laughs> breast, it's okay. But I do believe today meat is slightly overrated. Meat's overrated. Meat is overrated. What, what do you mean? Well, meat to me is slightly boring. And hold on, I love meat too, but only once in a while. Uh, you get a piece of meat and you put it in your mouth, you chew. The first five seconds, all the juices flow around your mouth, they're gone. And then you are 20 more seconds chewing. <laughs> Something that is tasteless at this point. Something like this doesn't happen with a pineapple, an asparagus, or a green pea. How would you describe Jose Andres to someone who's never met him or never tried his food? Expect wonders. Ruth Reichel is one of America's and most respected food writers. Food is going to do things that you never imagined. It's going to come floating at you. It's going to explode. It's going to have textures that you didn't ever think that would be in your mouth. So it's not just a gimmick? It's not a gimmick. It's a kind of magic. It's like a circus of the mouth. Reichel says Andre started a revolution when he moved to America almost 20 years ago. He was the first person to really start thinking about molecular gastronomy in this country. And what molecular gastronomy says is, what if we think about deconstructing food? And deconstructing food. Deconstructing food, taking the parts of the food, you know, 
separating them and recombining them in interesting ways. New England clam chowder. Ah, I love New England clam chowder. Watch how he deconstructed my favorite soup. Look at those clams. And probably America's most traditional one. The, the traditional New England clam chowder, the clams are overcooked. Mm. These ones are raw. Mm. Already so much better. Every ingredient is the same. Cream. Clams, bacon, cream, until he adds the potato. A potato mousse, but it's the lightest form of potato mousse ever. This is what America is all about. A Spanish boy that came 18 years ago, actually trying to move forward a classic American dish, New England clam chowder. <laughs> wow. It's, it's clam chowder. Great. My name is Jose Andres, and I cook for a living. Andres's techniques are so advanced, he's been asked to teach a course in culinary physics next fall at Harvard. One of the things we're trying to do today is to make sure that we are able to feed people maximum flavor with a minimum quantity of food. He's been visiting the scientists there for years, working to understand the chemistry of everything in his kitchen. While we were there with him, he spent the better part of a day trying to better understand a complicated emulsion that surrounds the oil molecule, known as mayonnaise. We are surrounded by science. Everything that happens in our lives, especially in food, is a science. Finally, what is happening is that we know the why. The whys and whats of high school didn't interest Andres too much, so he dropped out and enrolled in a cooking school in Barcelona. His big break came when he was hired into this kitchen where the world's most celebrated chef, Ferran Adria, trained him in avant-garde cuisine. Jose Andres left for America and in 1993 opened up this classic Spanish tapas bar called Haleo in Washington, D.C., where he built a reputation and a following. Now the cook, who arrived in this country with a few dollars in his pocket, runs eight successful restaurants. His latest, called The Bazaar, has him spreading the gospel of Spanish-influenced molecular gastronomy in Beverly Hills. So that's... What, that's liquid nitrogen. That's liquid nitrogen. And that's popcorn. Caramelized popcorn. Caramelized popcorn. Are you ready for this? Because I believe your life is going to change forever. <laughs> I mean it. This is going to change my life? Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the dragon bread, boy. <laughs> what just happened? What's happening in the Bazaar's kitchen is that Andres and his culinary director, Ruben Garcia, are creating dishes with tastes and textures that have customers doing this. When I cook, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm very selfish, me and my team. We need to please ourselves. We need to make sure that we are convinced of what we are doing and eating, and that we, we see ourselves in that dish we are creating. If I don't please myself, it's impossible I will be able to please you. The Bazaar is the only restaurant in Los Angeles with a four-star review from the LA Times. And getting a reservation here is a bit like getting a seat next to Jack Nicholson at a Laker game. How are you? Hi. The story will continue after this. While Jose Andres is proud of his success in sunny Los Angeles, he's probably prouder of the kitchen he's volunteered at for the last 17 years in this tough Washington, D.C. neighborhood. I came here as a cook, sharing my time peeling potatoes. Or... The D.C. Central Kitchen was founded by Robert Egger. Hey, here is the man. He says Andres wandered in and offered his expertise just weeks after he moved into town. And we couldn't get rid of him, man. I mean, he came down here and he was always down here helping. And I always felt like I have to give back to America what America has given me. He was drawn to their model, a 12-week culinary training course for people with little hope, former prisoners, drug abusers, and the homeless. Now they distribute fresh meals daily prepared from one ton of donated surplus food. Maybe needs a little bit more time than the zucchini, but... Staffers say they've stopped being surprised when they hear Hola, guapa. Hey. first thing in the morning hey, señor. when the chef shows up to work. Chefs of America, we should be more outspoken about the way we are feeding America. Not only 
about what I'm feeding them in my restaurant or in the great restaurants of America. It's only one, two, three percent of the Americans that eat in those restaurants. We should be more committed about the other 97 percent of Americans that don't come to our restaurants. That should be what I hope one day will be my little contribution. The chef has hired 10 graduates from the D.C. Central Kitchen and personally mentored 50 of their interns. He's also helped raise a million and a half dollars for the program that helps feed 4,000 people every day. Do you see yourself as a Spanish chef working in America or an American chef who was trained in Spain? I, I see more and more myself uh, as an American uh, uh, chef that was trained in Spain. At 40 years of age, this unofficial ambassador from Spain is about to open restaurants at the new Cosmopolitan Resort in Las Vegas, also in Miami, Mexico City, and Paris. Hey, we love you. Thank you so much. She wears a hat, she looks a lot But Washington, D.C. remains home for Andres, his wife Patricia, and their three daughters, Carlota, Inez, and Lucia. It's also here in D.C. that the chef, who wants to change the way America looks at food, offered me one last lesson during last call at minibar. This is a mojito. That's a mojito. That's a mojito. Put this in your tongue and it's going to explode and you're going to find this amazing. That's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Take a look. What you see here, like a solid thing, like you would think actually inside is liquid because outside is a very thin membrane. Mm. But it's liquid. Mm. And you see how we make that? Well, at the end, it's simple. We use a seaweed that we call alginate. We use a salt that is a salt of calcium that one with the other allows us to make things like this, as verifications. Mm. I don't like to tell people about the ingredients I'm using, but they are very natural, normal ingredients. Every ingredients. The right use of those ingredients allows me to make dishes like this. I'm trying to resist licking that off the plate. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, cut the camera off. <laughs>